Well, good morning, fellow aviators. Today is uh, March 29th, about, uh, let's see, what is it, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. It's uh, 34 degrees outside, cold, haven't flown in two weeks because the weather's been so bad. Uh, first things first, uh, for those of you that watched the Meridian video, things up to almost 100,000 views now, which blows my mind because that video was so bad. Anyway, uh, if you didn't watch it to the end, at the end I explained and confess that the plane is actually Eric's plane, not mine. So I've still got the Bristol, which is what we're in today. Uh, today we're going to uh, I'm going to talk about uh, communications with ATC in Class C airspace. Uh, just because I can't think of anything else to do a video on, that's why I haven't done one in a while. Uh, but I'll do that, and hopefully it'll be a short video, and we'll get started. So, uh, first things first, uh, you have to get ATIS at, at a Class C or Class B. But honestly, Class B and C are pretty much the same. If you can do Class C, you can do Class B. B, the only difference is you have to have permission to enter the airspace. Where in C, all you have to do is uh, establish communications with them. So, uh, first thing with first, we'll get ATIS. Albuquerque International Airport, ATIS Information Sierra, 13520. Wind 300 at 4. Visibility 10. Ceiling 2 1000 broken. Temperature 3 2.9 minus 9. Altimeter 3011. Simultaneous approaches in use. Arrivals expect visual approach runway 8. Runway 3. Departing runway 8. Notice to air mission. Taxiway hotel closed. Taxiway Fox Trot closed between Taxiway Fox Trot 2 and Fox Trot 4. Okay, so we've got Sierra. You have to have that when you call them up, uh, or they'll tell you to get it and call them back, so it's easier to get it ahead of time. Good on, Airfield 90. All right, now the other thing you have to do is when you call up, because the next, uh, so we're, we're going to call up and we're call, you call clearance first. And basically you tell them what you're going to do, they'll give you a squat code, uh, they'll know your altitude, stuff like that. So make sure you have that written down, ready to go when you contact them. Albuquerque clearance for still, 585, November Mike. November 585, November Mike, Albuquerque clearance. Yeah, Martin clearance, 585, November Mike, plane is NG5, slant golf. I'm going to be heading uh, 185 degrees at 8,000 feet. Gonna go to Socorro VOR, fly the VOR off into Berlin, and I've got Sierra. Sir, 585, remember Mike, you said 8,000 for the altitude or 8,500? 8,000 for the altitude, that's for the approach down there. 585, remember Mike, and uh, you want to do that VFR or? Uh, affirmative VFR. November 585, remember Mike, Roger, do you want VFR fly fall in Albuquerque Center in that area? Uh, no, that's a negative. I'll uh, just go down there. I'm sure you'll dump me, but I'll talk to you on the way back. Roger. Now that's a lot more than I usually talk to clearance. Uh, they normally just take what I give them and come back with the frequency and the squawk code. We're still 505, remember Mike, departure frequency 123.9 and squawk 0436. Okay, 23.90436, 5 Mike. We're still 505, remember Mike, read it back correct. So we get that entered. Uh, now you've completed your deal with uh, clearance. And again, this is the same for V or C, or, and typically Class D, you just talk to ground and the tower, uh, but very similar. You learn to talk in C, you're, you're covered almost everywhere. Now the next uh, controller we'll talk to will be ground. That's after I get the uh, oil temperature up and do the run-up, so you I'll get back to you when talk to them. Okay, the run-up is complete. Uh, you have to talk to ground before you get on any controlled uh, uh, taxiways or the runways. Uh, so you're basically in what they call non-movement areas prior to that. So we'll call up ground and we'll tell them what we want to do. It's usually pretty quick and easy with them. But that's the sequence. So far you get ATIS, you talk to clearance, and then you talk to ground, then we'll talk to tower, then we'll talk to departure. So pretty pretty simple uh, once you get past this mic fright. I'm a great ground, we're still 585, near Mike at Atlantic, ready, taxi, Sierra, I'd like uh, Fox 1 at, uh, for 3 if it's available. November 585, near Mike, Albuquerque, ground runway 1, correction, 
runway three at Foxtrot three, taxi crashing. Number Bustill, 585 November Mike, runway three at Foxtrot one, taxi via Foxtrot one. Okay, Foxtrot one, two, three at Fox one, five near Mike. So he <laughs> must be he must be sleeping this morning. So anyway, you keep ground frequency on while you're taxiing in case they need to contact you. Once you get in position, then you switch over to tower. All right, we'll put on the landing light, the other fuel pump. We still find our mic. We'd be ready upon reaching. That's firm, five your mic. All right, we switched over to tower. Albuquerque Tower, but still five eight five. Your mic hold short. Three Fox One, ready for takeoff. Still five eight five. No mic. Albuquerque Tower, Roger. Hold short. Runway three. Hold short. Three fighter mic. Okay, I thought we were going to get off right away because he wanted us to hurry up, but not so. And after I do the takeoff, then I'll break the video up and uh, just cover the landing, coming back with the communications. Anytime I have to talk to him, I'll put that in the video. The other stuff I'll cut out. So we'll hopefully make this short and sweet. Not my typical video, but I need to learn to do that. After all the time, as much as I watch YouTube video, I find that anything over 10 or 12 minutes, I'm, unless it's really something I need to watch for uh, how to do something or another, I, it's just too much. But still, 585 over Mike, runway 3 at Foxtrot 1. Line up and wait, traffic uh, landing on 8. Okay, line up and wait on 3, 5 or Mike. It used to be position and hold, which was a lot better, but some people, I guess, didn't understand that. So now it's line up and wait, which I really don't like line up and wait because it puts you on the runway more risk doing that. I just soon on the hold of the whole short line, but they want you to be ready to go when they tell you, so saves them a little bit of time, I'm assuming. So we got both fuel pumps on, landing lights on, flaps are in, chokes off, planes warmed up. All right, so we're lining up and wait. Somebody's landing on eight. They put the brake on. We're still 585 November, Mike. Fly heading, uh, or Rex, you right, turn on course is approved, runway 3, Fox 1, clear for takeoff. Yeah, clear for takeoff on 3, Fox 1, uh, right on course, Fogger Mike. Looks like somebody did a touch and go. So typically they won't talk to you once you're on the takeoff roll, unless something really important is happening. So here we go. All right, there's 50, that's enough. Up we go. All right, flaps up. Pitching for 75. Getting the right turn. November 6, 7 November, fly runway heading for the moment. The correction of the departure, and you can turn right on uh, right heading 190 for 6, 7 November. Runway 8, Alpha 4, clear for takeoff. Runway 8, Alpha 4, the departure and clear right turn 190 7, 6, 7 November. Alpha 2199, Alpha Kirky Tower, runway 8, full length, line up away. Alpha 8, runway 8, Alpha 2199. Still 5 November, Mike, on a departure today. Go to departure, Friday, Mike. So that's next. We'll contact them, tell them what we're going to pass through on altitude. I'm going to depart you for still 585, your mic passes through 64 on the way to 8. We're still 585, no, mic, I'm going to depart you right at Yeah, that's it. So, they'll give you traffic advisories if they, uh, if something gets close to you. You got AIDS over here, AIDS B over here showing you all the stuff. So, uh, I will talk to you, I guess, on the way back when we get ready to land or or I'll, I'll plug in whatever communications I get uh, from the controllers. Again, really simple. Uh, I was very lucky. I learned to fly in class airspace, so the radios became, you know, uh, pretty easy. At first, they're real intimidating. I had everything written down, what to say. My instructor loved it pretty soon. She threw, threw away the list, so I had to rem remember what I was going to say. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll talk to you when we have some more communications with the controllers. So, Mike, destination. 
I'm going to go down and do the uh, uh, procedure turn at the, v the score VOR, do the VOR Alpha, and then back into uh, International. Just still find over Mike, Roger. Uh, maintain VFR at or below uh, 8,000. 8,000, find over Mike. Okay, we were off, uh, maintain a VFR at or, at or above 8,000 kilometers. Yeah, he's probably doing that for traffic. We're still find over Mike, traffic 12 o'clock, 20 miles, maneuvering the South Track chair, restricted 85 and above, currently at uh, 8,000 climate. Okay, looking for traffic, negative TCAS, negative visual, find over Mike. So that's typically what you might get once you kind of departed the, getting ready to depart the airspace. They'll give you some tra traffic advisories and uh, maybe, you know, have you hold an altitude or change an altitude or change a heading for traffic. So that's more communication you get with them, but it's pretty easy. Altitude, my discretion, uh, 3 Bravo Alpha. We're still fine, our mic altitude, your discretion, traffic, no factor. 5 your mic. We're still five number of mic. Radar services terminated. Spark VFR, we should change proof. Okay, Spark VFR, talk to your way back, five your mic. Okay, that's, uh, I've gotten far enough out of his airspace now that he wants to dump me. Uh, he could have kept me, rarely does he do that when I'm going down to the Socorro VOR, but uh, that's communications on get back to uh, VFR. He's basically dropped you as far as watching you. Uh, I'll contact him when we come back. Uh, typically, I think the boundaries on the Class C airspace are there's a five mile r uh, radius ring and a 10 mile. I usually talk to him at least by 20 miles away from the field. And once you've made communication with him in Class C, you're good to go. You can enter the Class C airspace without permission as opposed to Class B airspace. So, uh, I'll talk to you uh, when we get back around, and I'm going to contact him to go back into International. Okay, I just got done flying the VOR Alpha into Berlin. I need to head back to Albuquerque, so the first thing you do is get ATIS. ATIS is still Sierra, so I'll contact him about at least 20 miles away from the field uh, to stay out of their airspace until I make contact with them. So we're switching over to uh, Approach now. Approach, departure, same thing, uh, same frequency. Albuquerque approach, but still 585 North Mike. Still 585 North Mike, Albuquerque approach. Yeah, approach 585 North Mike, just off the VOR Alpha Blend. Uh, heading back to International, full stop, and I've got the Sierra. Still 5 North Mike, squawk 0441. 0441, fighter Mike. So that's what happens on initial contact. He'll give you a squawk code. Sometimes he wants you to hide in. Uh, sometimes they'll ask you what your altitude is, but all that stuff's pretty easy. So, uh, 5 North Mike, radar contact, 3 miles west to northwest of uh, Berlin at 10,500. Make straight in, runway 3. Uh, that's uh, Bristol 585 North Mike, I'm at 7,500. 5 North Mike, uh, permanent LT check. Okay, I think, I think he said it was uh, 10,500, but you got it. Stay on them with them. If they make a mistake or you make a mistake, you'll get it corrected. And he gave me straight in, so I've got the visual approach set up. Uh, the next contact with him will probably be, it might be traffic, but typically it'll be switching me over to tower. So I'll have the backup frequency already dialed in, stay ahead of the airplane. And I still find my tower 120.3. I go to tower or find my mic. So that's the next handoff. Uh, again, between initial contact and that, might be some traffic calls, heading, altitude restrictions, stuff like that, but all pretty simple, so we'll go over to tower now. One, one, three, Bravo Alpha, runway eight, clear for the option. Runway eight, clear for the option. Uh, three, Bravo Alpha. And upper Creek Tower, still 585, Mike, going nav three, full stop. Still 585, November, Mike, Albuquerque Tower, hello, runway three, clear to land. Clear to land on three, five to Mike. I always write that down because I, you have to be cleared to land or you could be in big trouble. Uh, so write that down to make sure that you gave it to me. I don't have to check with them again. Uh, next communications with them will uh, probably uh, get off the runway and I'll go over to ground. So you basically do everything in reverse. You'll get ATIS, approach, then uh, tower, then ground. The only thing you don't do is you don't uh, go to uh, clearance because you, you don't need that.
Clear number 585 number Mike, where do you park? Go to T-Hangers. Five eight five number Mike, sorry, I got a new headset and I didn't realize I was still keyed up. Where do you park? Uh, go to T-Hangers, five eight Mike. Number Mike, Roger, left turn, taxi, Foxtrot 1, you can taxi in. Okay, uh, Fox 1, taxi in, stay with you, fighter Mike. November 113, Bravo Alpha, runway 8, clear for the option. Clear for the option, runway 8, 3, Bravo Alpha. Okay, 737, Echo Mike, turn right, taxiway, Echo, contact ground. Turn right, taxiway, Echo, contact ground, sky hot, 7, Echo Mike. Now that's a little unusual. Usually she'll have me contact ground after I get off, but since I'm so close to the T-Hanger, she wants me to just stay with her on frequency. So we won't be switching to uh, ground, but you typically you would. Well, okay, that's it for Class CATC communications. Uh, get home, edit this thing, and upload it. Hope you found it useful. And thanks for coming along. See ya.